Assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters and welcome to a brand new series titled Lady of the Universe, a show dedicated to our great lady Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. In today's episode we shall be discussing her blessed birth. Born during the period of ignorance before the significant rise of Islam where the birth of a girl was frowned upon. How did the birth of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam change the status of woman in society? as well as the cultural norms. Inshallah, in today's episode, we shall be discussing Fatima al-Zahra's birth, Fatima al-Zahra's reference in the Quran, her, relas- her, her relationship with her mother in those early years, and much more. Um, so inshallah, much more in today's episode. With me today is Sayyida. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, Zahra. It's lovely to be back on. And mashallah, we're discussing the, the greatest lady who was ever born. Yeah. Um, our mother Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha, so it's an honor to be back discussing her. An absolute honor and my condolences to you all, to, to you, you on the martyrdom of Fatima Zahra Alayhi Salam and my condolences to um, to the viewers and Imam Mahdi Ajalla Ta'ala Faraja on the martyrdom of Fatima Zahra. Um, now we're commemorating the martyrdom of Fatima Zahra Alayhi Salam and during this period, it's good to look at all aspects of her life from the beginning mm. to the end, inshallah. In this series, we'll look at her birth, her, her death, and all aspects, um, significant abs- aspects, inshallah, which we can learn from. Mm-hmm. Um, so now looking at her birth, um, what were the unique circumstances of her birth and um, society at the time? Mm-hmm. We know that the society, um, they frowned upon um, the birth of a girl, um, a, an infant baby girl was seen as a liability mm. and a burden, an economic burden on a family. So mm. what was so unique about the birth of Fatima the Zahra mm. alayhi salam? I mean, Zahra, like you rightly said, the, the time in Arabia at that time is very different to what we know it now. Uh, Alhamdulillah, times have moved on um, and the way that we think has become more humane. But at that time, like you rightfully said, when a daughter was born, it was seen as a burden mm-hmm. to the family. So when the father realized that he's been blessed, and I say blessed because every, every child born is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, particularly the daughters. Mm-hmm. We know that the status of a mother of a daughter in Islam is so high. So at that time, when a daughter was born, the face of the father would darken. It would, he would be filled with anger. Mm. Because like you rightfully said, the times, uh, the political climate at that time was very different to what we know it now. They would feel like a daughter wouldn't be able to support them economically, financially. How would a daughter carry on the the father's name? How would the daughter carry on with the household name? Mm -hmm. Uh, Furthermore, if there was a war, uh, if there was a battle, how would the daughter support the family? They saw the daughter as a burden rather than a blessing. Mm. They also felt, see, at the time in Arabia, um, similar to, for example, many religions now, they have caste systems, they have tribes back then in Arabia, and they felt that what if the daughter ran off? Um, what if she went you know, to another tribe? What if she, she um, got married into another tribe? Mm. That would bring shame upon the family. So there was all these circumstances surrounding the daughter's birth at the time in Arabia. And we see the birth of Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha completely changed the way a daughter 
was seen at that time. Now, if we go back to how a daughter was treated, we know that Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha, the mother of Sayyidah Fatima, the mother of our religion, she was a huge backbone, a huge support to our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him. And Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha, we know that she was very much involved in charity. She was very much um, involved in helping our beloved Prophet. Had it not been for, you know, our beloved Prophet has in many narrations said, had it not been for the wealth of Sayyidah Khadija and the sword of Ali and the support of Hazrat Abu Talib, our religion would not have spread in the early days without those key fundamental personalities. Mm. But also Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha supported our beloved Prophet when nobody did. Mm. So we see Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha looking after the women at that time who were afraid that their children, that their daughters in particular, would be buried alive. Mm. So we see her opening up her home. And this is one of the very first early signs that we see of charity in our religion. And we see how what we learn today is filtered down from these great personalities. Yeah. So Sayyidah Khalija Salamullahi Alaihi would open up her home for the mothers who were afraid that their daughters would be buried alive. Yeah. And we are told in narrations how mothers would travel in the darkness of the night and often they would have sacks on their backs, pretending that this was sacks of food, but actually their, their girls, their baby daughters were in those sacks. And she would open up her house just to protect these, these baby girls and these women from the anger of their husband and from the daughter being buried alive. So we have Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alaiha being born in this time where Arabia is very unsettled where the people are, like we said, inhumane, mm. where times are very different. And so when Sayyidah, Salam, Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alaiha was born, most, most narrations say that she was born five years after the um, introduction or the first revelation, let's mm. say. And she was born in the year six, 615. And when she was born, she was an absolute delight and joy to her parents. Narrations tell us how our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would go and just smell her because he would get the fragrance of Jannah. He would say, I, I, whenever I come near my daughter, I would get the fragrance of Jannah. And we know that she held a very dear place in his heart. She was the most beloved of family members to her, her beloved father, to our beloved Prophet Muhammad. Anybody who upset her would upset him. Anybody who upset our beloved Prophet in turn angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we mm. see that there's a huge chain related from Sayyidah Fatima salamullahi alayha through our beloved Prophet into our holy uh, Imams. We see her status. We see that she was born in a very uncertain time. And we know that because Sayyidah Khadija salamullahi alayha because she supported our beloved Prophet Muhammad when nobody else supported him, mm. the people at that time, they boycotted our beloved Prophet. They boycotted Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha. Sanctions, economic sanctions were put upon them. They resided in the valley of Hazrat Abu Talib for sanctuary. But even at the time of Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alaiha's birth, the women of Quraysh, the women of Makkah, didn't want to help Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha. Now we know that when we're both mothers mm. and SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, when we, uh, we gave birth to our children, we have, you know, family members around us to support us. But Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha, uh, her parents had already passed away. The women at that time were boycotting her because they didn't want to be, they said that she, uh, because she supported our beloved Prophet, because she converted to... Uh, or, I mean, we have to realize that Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha never worshipped idols. She followed the Abrahamic traditions, but she was one of the first to accept Islam when um, our beloved Prophet got the revelation. So these women boycotted Sayyidah Khadija during the birth. Mm. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us? In narrations, we know that when Sayyidah Khadija Salamullah was going through birth, when she was going through labor and Sayyidah Fatima was being born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent ladies from the heavens to help her. Sayyidah Maryam was sent down. Sayyidah Asiya was sent down. Eve, the um, 
wife of Nabi Adam, and Kothar, uh, sorry, Kulthum. Uh, Say the Kulthum, the wife, uh, the sister of Prophet Musa, alayhi salam. So we have these great ladies who are sent down to help Say the Khadija salam alayhi alayha give birth. And it just shows the status of Sayyidah Khadija and it shows the status of Sayyidah Fatima Salamu Allahi Alayha and that even at her birth, miracles took place. Even at her birth, when everybody else abandoned Sayyidah Khadija, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent these angels, sent these women from the heaven, the four women from the heaven to help Sayyidah Khadija Salamu Allahi Alayha at what we know is one of the most hardest times that a woman can ever go through is during labor and giving birth. Yeah, no, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Her her birth is is certainly a a miracle within mm. itself, as you explained. And and what's beautiful, I think, is the significance that um, it really does show us that when you are in a way of God, when you are in a way of the right path, even if the whole world abandons you, then Allah will still stand with you absolutely. and will provide the support. Mm. And I think that is absolutely beautiful to see. And I think it's a statement within itself that the Prophet Muhammad was granted a daughter because mm. um, back then it's seen as to continue on your progeny, to continue on that line of, um, you know, the, the family name mm. and the line, you will need a son to continue it on. And I think, you know, the Prophet was tormented so much about not having a son to continue on his mm. legacy, to continue on his line. Mm. And here we see that the holy progeny that the line was continued through a woman. I think that is so significant mm. because even till today, people always accuse of Islam of oppressing women and accuse of Islam of belittling women and the status of women. Mm. And then here you see the Prophet of Islam mm. having a woman and um, having a daughter and she is the most you know, pure and, and, and highest figure. But I wanted to ask you, do you think that till today, because till today we see women's rights and we see, um, we see kind of like campaigning for women's rights and even in, in, in some communities they still see the mm. birth of a woman they still frown upon mm. the birth of a lady um, of, of an infant girl and they see it as you know as in a sense I've still heard comments where people say mm. it's you need the son to continue on the family name and, and and aspects like that do you think you know obviously Prophet Muhammad came to give so much so much rights to women do you think the society in this sense has um, regressed or has kind of mm. reverse back and um, we do not practice the the rights that Prophet Muhammad brought down mm. to women? I mean that's a really interesting point that you've made and it's a really interesting question and like like I said times have alhamdulillah moved on we are not as um, inhumane as burying the girls as as it was the time when our beloved say the Fatima salamu alayhi alayha was born but Often we do see in some communities, in some backgrounds where the daughter, the birth of a daughter is frowned upon. Like you said, particularly when they fear that the daughter's name, uh, the, the son is not born, so the son cannot carry on the name, the legacy of the father, the legacy of the household. How will they help economically, financially, the daughter they feel might be a burden. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to us where a daughter is born, especially if you have a child who is born who is the first daughter, the mother and the father is blessed so much with the first daughter, a first child being a daughter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that if you were tried with your daughter, mm. then for every trial you get with your daughter, that's a door of Jannah being opened for you. Mm. So the daughter has a huge significance in Islam. And we know that the daughter will then carry on the legacy. We know that the daughter will then bear children. And inshallah, the daughter's children will, inshallah, and this is all our aim, where our children, and this is why we bring so much emphasis to our youth, not just our children, but the youth of today, where we want them to grow up and follow in the footsteps of, footsteps of our beloved Ahlul Bayt. Ultimately, we want our children to be in the army of Imam Zamana, alayhi mm. salam. That's all our aim. But yes, going back to the original point, our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, was mocked, was tormented because they made fun that he would not have a line, he would not have a legacy. They call him Atar, which mm. means, you know, when an animal has a cut off tail, they would say that your children have died. Because remember, narrations tell us that uh, peace, our, Prophet, be, our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, had other daughters that were born as well. Um, the daughters were named Zainab, Ruqayya, 
Qulthum and then Fatima. And then the narration tell us that he had sons, Abdullah and Qasim, who also passed away in infancy. Now imagine as a mother losing one child. But Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha and our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, narrations tell us that they lost several children before Fatima. Mm. So imagine the grief that Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha as a mother went through at that time. Not only is she dealing with the psychological and the emotional and the physical grief of losing a child, but she's also dealing with emotional abuse, emotional, yeah, you can call it emotional abuse, emotional trauma as to what her beloved husband is going through. He would walk the streets and he would be mocked. He would walk the streets and they would say, where is your lineage? Where is your line? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans best. And what did he reveal? Surah Qawthar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, Indeed, Muhammad, we have granted you kawthar. Kawthar being, Sayyidah Fatima salamullahi alayha. Kawthar meaning abundance, abundance of blessings. So pray to your Lord and sacrifice to him only. Indeed, your enemy is the one cut off from blessings in this world and the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, do not worry about your lineage. Do not worry for I have a plan greater than anybody can foresee. And what was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan? Bibi Fatima alayhi salam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, and through Bibi Fatima's legacy came the 11 Imams. And of course we await our 12th Imam, Imam Zamana alayhi salam, and we pray for his quick reappearance, inshallah. Sure. But this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessing our beloved Prophet for his patience, mm. for his complete devotion and sacrifice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's just a lesson for us all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who are patient. Mm. What did say the Zainab say on the day of Ashura when, or you know, later on, even in the courtyards of Yazid, I saw nothing but beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who are patient. Mm. And this is a lesson for us all where, yes, sometimes, People may feel that the daughters um, who are born, particularly in some communities and particularly in some castes, they feel that the daughter may be a burden. Mm. But just look at Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha. We are blessed to call her our mother. We are blessed to call her the best of women, the leader of the women of Jannah. And we pray that her blessings remain upon us all, especially our youth who will carry the the message of our beloved Prophet forward. Yeah. But yes, the time of her birth was such where the political situation was very grave. The, the, the people of Arabia, the way that they acted, was not something that, alhamdulillah, we, we don't see that now. But for those who, um, like you went, your question proposed initially, our daughters frowned upon. SubhanAllah, most people would see daughters as a blessing now. Yes, perhaps we can say that some communities still see daughter as a burden, but we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only bless you with what is correct for you at mm. that time. Allah will give you because He plans best. We plan, He plans, He is the best of planners. Absolutely. And what is our word against His? That we are nothing compared mm. to Him. Mm. Absolutely. And I think it's beautiful, you know, the, the verse in the Holy Quran that you mentioned about the Prophet being given, given Fatimah Zahra alayhi salam and and it really shows us that even if someone mocks you and mm. someone, you know, sometimes people mock someone and then kind of they will, they mock them because they have a lack, that, they have that lacking within themselves. Absolutely. And that really does mirror in that mm. verse. Um, apart from that verse, I mean, there is many other mm. references in the Holy Quran about Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. And I think even the titles of Fatima Zahra are so beautiful. Fatima Zahra. Um, as Sadiqa, she was mm. truthful in everything she she done. Al Tahira, she is a pure one, mm. and we know in the, in the Quran, you know, I told that she is pure, and the Bayt are pure, mm. and there was a verse revealed about that, and and it shows us that even the even the titles of Fatima Zahra Ali Salam they mirror her morals and her qualities, and these are the qualities that we should have, mm. and it shows us even within her name that we you know we must be the truthful ones, we must be the 
pure ones. We must be all these aspects and all the qualities that she has is really something that we should inspire to as mm. well. Mm. Um, so, so, so tell us more about you know her title, the references in the Quran, mm. her status, mm. and in a sense what we could learn from mm. that. I mean, actually, just going back to the reference in the Holy Quran, we know that Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha never backed down from standing up against oppressors. She was very much involved in politics, which is, it, it just shows how, you know, she learned this from Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha. It went down to Sayyidah Fatima, Sayyidah Zainab, Sayyidah Umm Kulthum. We, we see like a, a, a pure bloodline between the women, between the mothers. Now, Sayyidah Fatima, Salamullahi alayha. If we look at her name, first of all, her name Fatima was given to her name Fatima was from the mother of Sayyidah Khadija, her grandmother. So we see already she has a pure name. Her purity starts from within. And then we see her develop as she gets older and older. Mm. And we see the event of Mubahila. And we see how Say the Fatima Salamullahi Alayha is representing the Muslims against the Christians. Mm. And there's a beautiful Quranic ayat where it says in Surah 3, verse 61 So whoever argues with you concerning the truth, even after knowledge, then say, Come, we should call our sons, and you call your sons, and our women, and your women, and ourselves, and yourselves. And thereafter, we pray to invoke God's rejection on those who are lying. Now, this, this Quranic ayat is referring to the event of Mubahila, mm. where the Christians were rejecting the truth. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, took Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha, Imam Ali Alayhi Salam, and Hassanain Alayhi Salam. And actually, it's just a testament to who he has taken as well. Now, our beloved Prophet, this was after the uh, sad demise, this was after the shahadat of Lady Khadija, sallamullahi alayha. He could have chosen anyone. Mm. He could have chosen other wives as well. But he took Fatima. He took her to represent part of his family. So she is a woman who is coming out of her home mm. in full hijab, she is representing the women, she is representing her family, she is representing Islam against the non-Muslims. Mm. And when the Christians saw the amount of nur that was there at that time, the five infallibles that were there at that time, they backed away. But it just shows, you know, that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has drawn reference to Sayyidah Fatima sallallahu alayhi in the Quran as well. There is no denying her majesty. There is no denying how great a lady she was. Mm. There is nobody who can ever compare to say the Fatima Salamullahi Alayha. There is no better role model than her. Mm. And we see this in her early life where she stood for politics. We will talk about later on where we had the, the sermon of Fadak and how she was injured at the time, yet she still stood up for her rights. Mm. But even in her early years, and remember Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha passed away at a very young age. She was not old when she passed away. So when the event of Mubahila took place, she was fairly young, yeah. and she had very young children. Sayyidah Zainab must have only been around two at that time. Perhaps Sayyidah Umm Kulthum was not even born at that time. So Sayyidah Zainab, we see, is learning from her mother at such a tender age that my mom is going out of the house, is representing the Muslim Ummah, is not afraid to stand up for politics, is not to stand, afraid to stand up for her rights. Yes, she's a mother. See, Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha, her main joy, her main pleasure was to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But after that, was to look after her family, mm. her house, Imam Ali alayhi salam, her children. But she never backed down from the face of oppression. And it is a great lesson for us all, as young women, as young mothers, and for our youth who may be watching this show, 
that she is an example who we should all follow in her footsteps. Women nowadays, often because of our hijab, we may face oppression. Often because of the way we dress, we may be rejected in certain situations. Mm. But here you have Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alaiha being born in the most oppressed of times, speaking out in the most oppressed of times, but she never backed down and neither should we really. Definitely, yeah, that's beautiful. Um, going to her early life, I know you made reference to early life and, and even Sayyidah Zayn Alayhi Salam, the early life is interesting mm. because we know that um, psychologically that the first years of a child's life is perhaps the most important years mm -hmm. of a human's life because whatever happens during those early years that does get imprinted within someone's um, character and, and it's interesting even when you watch um, crime documentaries and mm. you see that they always when when they even come to um, court and they want to prove something they always look back at that child's early early yes. years and see and see why has that individual turned out the way that they have was there any trauma in the early years did they witness anything and it's quite interesting because sometimes when we are raising our kids we don't really pay much attention or much significance towards those early years and how important those early years are and it's interesting to see that the Ahl Bayt and Fatim Zahra السلام, they would bring their young children and they wouldn't treat them like young children, yes. they would actually give them responsibility, they would give them a status, they would give them the opportunity to learn and, and to really mold, they really molded them into strong characters mm -hmm. and I think we often when raising our kids we really belittle how their capability and how much they're capable of mm -hmm. and we don't give them that opportunity and I think if we paid more attention to those early years then perhaps we would have better members of society yeah. and um, and, and, and now going back to early years, I want to talk about her relationship with her mother because mm. I think it's so beautiful, the relationship between a mother and a child and the father and a child. And we can talk about the relationship with her father later on. But her relationship with her mother, because she did die when Fatima Zahra was quite young. So what was her relationship with her mother during those early mm. years? I mean, like you said, the relationship between a, a daughter and a mother is beautiful. And a mother is there in the home to protect the child, to love the child, sacrifice. A mother will sacrifice everything just for her child's happiness, just for her child's well-being, just so her child is safe and secure. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled in a female, particularly a mother. And we see a beautiful relationship between Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha and Sayyidah Fatima the Zahra Salamullahi Alaiha. And even though the, the political climate at that time was such that times were uncertain, Sayyidah Khadija, Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha was very much present in mm. Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alaiha's life. We see how Sayyidah Fatima has learnt patience from her mother. She has learnt courage from her mother. She has learnt charity from her mother. And there are numerous traditions of how Sayyidah Fatima Salam Allahi Alaiha was so charitable in her life. We have the narration of giving away her wedding dress on, on the night of her wedding, which again is something that we'll speak about later on. The narrations when Hassanain Alayhi Salam were, were ill and they were fasting as another and the three knocks on the door on the three consecutive days. But we see the the ultimate charity which came from Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha and then filtered into Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha. We've spoken about how Sayyidah Khadija opened up her home for the, for the, the women at that time to protect the baby girls. We also see Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha had it not been for her wealth and her support and her love when we look at marriage in Islam, we look at the marriage of Sayyidah Khadija to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and we look at the marriage of Imam Ali alayhi salam and Sayyidah Fatima alayhi alayhi. Those are the two marriages that we aspire to have in mm. our married life. They are the two marriages where they completed each other, and a marriage should be such where you grow close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your spouse. So we see Sayyidah Khadija alayhi alayhi giving so much support to our beloved Prophet and ultimately, 
Sayyidah Fatima sallallahu alayhi is seeing all of this. Sometimes actions speak louder than words. Mm. And we are seeing the love that Sayyidah Khadija is giving Sayyidah Fatima sallallahu alayhi And this is the love that then she gives her father after the shahadat of Sayyidah Khadija. Mm. We know that she then becomes the mother of her father because she sees how her mother looked after her father in her life. Mm. We see that when the economic sanctions befell upon them, when the people of Makkah no longer wanted to support our beloved Prophet because of Islam, they said that he was, because he was denouncing idol worship. And of course, they were all idol worshippers at the time. They didn't want to believe in our beloved Prophet. So Hazrat Abu Talib gave them sanctuary in his valley. And we see Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha, eventually that leads to her death because she supports the Prophet so much. There would be times where she no longer slept because she would be staying awake at night to support our Prophet, to watch over him, mm -hmm. to make sure that nobody was harming him, to make sure that he was safe. She gave away, she gave away money just so that people could buy food. She would eat plants and eventually that led to her sad demise, that led to her shahada. But we see Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha at a very young age, perhaps two or three years living in this val valley with her family. So we see that she is learning everything from her mother. Mm -hmm. Her support, her charity, everything comes from her mother. So much so that when Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha, her shahada took place and when she her, when she passed away, Sayyidah Fatima was the support for her father. And one of the things that Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha said to our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, was always look after Fatima. And we see this close relationship, this bond between a father and a daughter blossoming and growing until you know, after his shahada, and then we will talk about her shahada later, but she only passed away around 90 days or so after the shahada of her beloved father, Prophet Muhammad. And we see this close relationship and he protected her until his death. And so there is so much we learn from Sayyidah Khadija. There is so much we learn from Sayyidah Fatima. And there is no wonder that Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha is our perfect role model because she had the perfect mother. Mm -hmm. She had Sayyidah Khadija as her mother and she's learned so much from her. Definitely, yeah. I think it's beautiful when we see the family structure of Fatima Zahra Ali Sam, especially in those early years. Mm -hmm. And um, and the thing is, I don't think we appreciate much the importance of family structure. We always talk about Islam emphasizing on family structure, but we really don't see the importance yeah. of it. I mean, in society now, there's this push for indiv individualism where everyone is me and I, me and I. Even the, even you know, the importance of getting married and fa building a family structure mm. is not really emphasised upon. And even the rates of marriage have declined dramatically because now we're moving towards a society where people say we don't need to get married, mm. and really, it's not be not much importance have been put on family structure. And it's beautiful to see because when we look at Fatima Zahra Ali Salam in her early years, and even Ahl Bayt Ali Salam the emphasis they put on family structure and how present mm. they are in child upbringing is something that is beautiful. Even in today's society, a lot of men feel the upbringing of the children is on the woman and they don't really play a vital or a active role in raising the children. And we see with the Prophet Muhammad, because, because um, Lady Khadija Alayhisselam died very early on and that he did take the, the role of raising mm. Fatima um, Zahra Alayhisselam. And he was pretty much present and, and in a sense, even that relationship between father and daughter is beautiful to see that caring mm. aspect. And I think we as daughters, we are very caring towards our fathers. Mm. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful concept to have. And I, and I always, I've always said this before in previous shows as well, that I always look at Fatima Zahra Ali Salam, the relationship she had with her father. And I really, the more I looked into that, the more closer I became with my father, mm. like really close to him. And I, I still remember one day, it was um, I was sitting down with my mom and I, like, I had my legs folded and my dad came and he put his head like on my 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 lap like mm. I was sitting across the cross leg and he put his le head on my lap and he was like oh my daughter and just just that incident I thought about Fatima Zahra mm. Ali Salam how that 
daughter is so caring towards her father and it's like a mother of her father and I think the closer a daughter gets mm. to her father the more a father kind of gets closer to her mm. I, I can't explain it but until I, 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 I completely understand where you're coming from the relationship that say the Fatima and our beloved prophet had was very unique yeah and we all try and emulate that relationship yeah. and we should because that was a perfect relationship and they are perfect role models for example Uh, our beloved Prophet would rise and he would stand up when Sayyidina Fatima sallallahu alayhi would enter the home. Mm. You know, these small traits is what we should try and have in our relationships with our fathers, with our mothers, and what we should teach our young children to have as well. Because ultimately, they, like I said, are the future generation. They are the ones who are going to carry the name of, the, of our beloved Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam forward. And we have these beautiful traditions that we learn in history. I mean, just looking at the close relationship of Fatima the Zahra sallallahu alayhi even with her children, the way she nourished yeah. them, the way she spoke to them, the way she was very much present in the home. Say the Fatima sallallahu alayhi we learn so much from her. We can apply so much from her in our daily life. We are blessed to have her in our lives to help us through difficulties, to help us through trials, through tests. We all go through ups and downs. I mean, we just look at her beautiful tasbih that was given to her, that was gifted to her from her father. Mm. So the Fatima sallallahu alayhi like we said, used to work hard in the home. But we also see the aspect of charity. One day Lady Fidda would work, one day she would do the household chores. They would share. Mm. She wouldn't say that I am the lady of the house, so I am just going to sit down. Lady Fidda would do work one day, she would do work, they would share the household chores. And narration tell us that Imam Ali alayhi salam and Sayyidina Fatima salam alayhi alayhi would also share the chores in the house. They lived in perfect harmony. And we see Sayyidina Fatima salam alayhi alayhi being gifted with this, this tasbih, the beautiful tasbih where, you know, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam has said that the tasbih of my great grandmother Fatima holds such merit that if you recite it straight away after your namaz, you are saved from the fire of hell. And this is something that we all recite after every wajib namaz. And we should recite it, and it's something that we should instill in our children. It's such a small tasbih, yet it holds such merit and such benefits for us that I think if we actually sat down and contemplated on the words, we would be in complete amazement. Allahu Akbar, Allah is great. There is no power greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no greater judge in this universe better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, often in times of difficulty where you feel that things are going wrong in your life, just pick up the tasbih. And often, and I often start off by saying, la hawla wa la quwata. There is no power greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is my judge and he is the best of judges. I will do whatever I can to the best of my ability. Then we have alhamdulillah where we are Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that he has given us. Thank him in the good times, thank him in the bad times, thank him in the times of happiness and thank him in the times of distress. Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, what did we see in the courtyard of Yazid and Sham? She starts off her sermons by saying thank you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I thank Allah for everything that he has given me even though she had just witnessed the shahadat of her family. She had seen the shahadat of her sons, her brothers, her nephews. They had been paraded from street, from Kufa to Sham. They had been humiliated. But everything that she starts off, she starts off with thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's just showing us how no matter what we are going through in life, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that we have. And then subhanallah, glory be to Allah. All gratitude is to him. Everything we have is because of, is because of him. Mm. So these simple things we learn from Sayyidina Fatima, the tasbih, her charity, the way she stood up against oppression, her politics, her humbleness. Salatul Layl is another one, a beautiful example of how she would stand up in prayer at night. And she loved to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is filtered down in her children. the Zainab would stand up in Salatul Layl, even in the prisons of Sham. Say the Zainab was standing up in Salatul Layl just after her mother's shahadat. Mm. And we see how she's taught her children this. So these are just beautiful and simple examples that we have for us and for our children as well. Definitely, yeah. 
That's beautiful. And we have come to the end of the show. So inshallah, we'll be back with another episode. No. Inshallah, thank you very much. And thank you to the viewers for tuning in today. Inshallah, we will be back with many other episodes. Inshallah, talking about many other aspects of the life of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. Surely the birth of Fatima was a miracle, was a miraculous birth. And just to end off, if anyone is granted a daughter, let's not let these names of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam die out. If you have a daughter, call her Fatima. Zahra, Batul, Sadiqa, Tahira, Mardiya. Let the life, the name and the titles of Fatima Zahra السلام, live on in generations to come. For surely there is a blessing for calling your daughter the names of Fatima Zahra السلام. Thank you all for watching today. Inshallah, we'll be back with another episode where we'll be talking about another aspect of Fatima Zahra's life. Please do tune in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam alaykum السلام عليك أيتها الصديقة الشهيدة